أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين ورحمة ربه للعالمين سيدنا وأولنا والشهيد علينا محمد وعلى آله المجاهدين وأصحابه المتقين ومن سار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers, dear sisters A blessed Jumu'ah to you and yours uh, I would like to also This is being recorded a day in advance Today is Thursday, it's not Friday, and uh, the news that I just received is that Imam Ahmed Qasim has been rushed to the hospital, and um, I guess there's some blood transfusion that's taking place as I speak right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him uh, a hasty shifa, a cure from the ailment that he has, and if it is Allah's will, and eventually all of us are approaching that moment, if it is Allah's will for a departure, we pray that he departs from this world of discrimination and oppression and injustice to the world of eternal peace and everlasting tranquility. Uh, this week we will be on the second track, the first track is Bani Israel. The second track is Bani Umayyah and their likes. Bani Israel and their historical and contemporary clones. And Bani Umayyah, their historical and contemporary counterparts. Okay, we will, you may have, some of you may have noticed that in the previous presentations about uh, Muawiyah in particular, the information that was provided by yours truly here was extracted from history books and other books of uh, information uh, concerning Muawiyah. And it's been my focus in life to concentrate on the direct meanings that come to us from the Quran. I may have jumped the gun, as it were, uh, to speak about the genesis of political deviation in Islam beginning with Muawiyah, to have gone to uh, other sources besides the pivotal and central Qur'an. So now we are going to go through Allah's book and see whether we, if we can discern any information pertaining to those who have uh, sabotaged the Khilafah and the Imama and turned Islamic rulership into one of a dynasty and uh, inherited power or authority. So we're going to, here we're going to see Abu Sufyan, we're going to mention some ayat in the Qur'an. 
and we are going to realize that these ayat were revealed pertaining to Abi Sufyan and to Muawiyah, in particular to Abu Sufyan. The first ayah is Surat Al-Anfal, ayah number 36. The ayah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لِيَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسْرَةً ثُمَّ يُغْلَبُونَ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ يُحْشَرُونَ Let's be calm about this because for this, the explanation of this ayah and other ayat uh, to some individuals is going to be like shock therapy because ever since the political deviation that began with King Muawiyah, ever since that time, um, Muslim public opinion, and I'm not speaking about Muslim scholars. Muslim scholars, the fuqaha and the ulama, um, most of them, they were aware of this political uh, deviousness that occurred. And they dealt with it in their own ways. Uh, peaceful resistance, uh, non-violent coexistence with the usurping powers of Bani Umayya or Bani al-Abbas or Bani this or Bani that. There have been many uh, dynasties that ruled over Muslims throughout the past almost 14 centuries. So let's look at this ayah, and I'm not, I'm not intending to shock anyone. I'm not intending to be offensive to anyone. My intention is to be informative to everyone. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لِيَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Of a certainty, those who are actively in denial of Allah, they spend their money and wherewithal to block the course unto Allah. فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا And they will spend money and resources ثُمَّ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسْرًا Then, their action of financing anti-Muhammadi, anti-Islamic, anti-Muhajireen and Ansar, anti-Ahl al-Bayt forces, that act of theirs, meaning the way that they are spending their money in a war against Allah and His Prophet and those who are with Him, is going to become a matter of remorse for them. They're going to regret it. فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسْرًا ثُمَّ يُغْلَبُونَ And then... After all that, they are going to be defeated. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ يُحْشَرُونَ And those who were actively opposed to Allah are going to be assembled in Jahannam, are going to be corralled in hell. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ يُحْشَرُونَ Now, 
this area was sent down to us from Allah Azza wa Jal to expose those who were financing the wars against Allah's Prophet. This Islamic da'wah was not an easy task. There was no freedom of expression and freedom of association and freedom of movement and freedom of conscience Eventually, the lack of all of those freedoms pertaining to the Prophet and those who were committed with him led to wars. We had Badr, we had Uhud, we had Al Ahzab, we had many other battles that were fought simply because the social order of the Arabian Peninsula at the time of the Prophet would not tolerate this message that refers their society and mankind to Allah and his Prophet as the ultimate authority. So when we, I know you, many of you, have read about Bad the battle of Badr and Uhud and Al-Ahzab and the rest of these battles. You've read about them. But how many times did, uh, did it occur to you who was paying for these wars? It takes a budget to launch a war. This area is focusing our our attention on those who were financing these wars against the Prophet of Allah and against the divinely committed Muslims with him. Now, if you wanted to refer to at least one tafsir that is considered mainstream among the tafsir, uh, and that is Tafsir al Tabari. Concerning this area, you will find that one of the well known Islamic ulama scholars, Saeed ibn Jubair, some of you may be familiar with the name. I'm going to mention quite a few names here. And for those of you who are uh, familiar with the first generations of Islam after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Some of you are going to be familiar with many of these names. And just in case you are not familiar, because I, I can't go into, you know, a type of background information about every one of these, because that's going to consume a lot of time. But right now, alhamdulillah, with the uh, availability of the internet. Uh, I hope most of you have access to it. I'm pretty confident that most of you do. Um, then you can uh, dig out the names of these well-known scholars in Islam. So, Saeed ibn Jubair said this ayah, ayah number 36, in Surah Al-Anfal was revealed to expose Abba Sufyan ibn Harb. And it says, for further information here, it's not just, you know, pointing to a person. There's some details uh, involved here. He says, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb uh, contracted, I'm using today's language, but that's what it means. Istajara contracted on the day of Uhud 2,000 of Al-Ahabish. Al-Ahabish is an Arabic word 
that refers to uh, a polyglot of people coming from different backgrounds. Some of them may have been Arabian, some of them may have been uh, coming from uh, European extraction, some of them may have been coming from African extraction, etc., etc. When you have a, a, a different mixture of people, ethnically and racially, uh, they are called Ahabish. So Abu Sufyan contracted 2,000 Ahabish to fight in the battle of Uhud against the Prophet and those who were with the Prophet in the battle of Uhud. So this was Abu Sufyan who took on this task. I mean, this first of all tells us he was a very rich man to pay for 2,000 in the context of those times and the circumstances of the Arabian Peninsula. There's another scholar, his name is Abdul Rahman ibn Abza. He said this ayah, number 38 in Surah Al-Anfal, was revealed pertaining to Abi Sufyan. And he also mentions that Abu Sufyan uh, contracted 2,000. He doesn't say a habish, just like Saeed ibn Jubayr pointed out, but 2,000. Uh, so that Abu Sufyan can use them to fight the messenger of Allah. That's in addition, this is still Abdurrahman ibn Abza speaking. He said that's those 2,000 that were basically Abu Sufyan's mercenaries. In addition to them, there were other Arabians who were uh, instigated or stimulated to fight against the Prophet of Allah and the committed Muslims with him. Another person, Al-Hakam ibn Utayba, he said this ayah, 38, ayah number 38 from Surah Al-Anfal, was revealed concerning Abba Sufyan, he says, he spent financing the Mushrikeen on the day of Uhud, 40 Uqiyas. Uqiyah is a measurement, a weight measurement pertaining to uh, gold. When someone weighs gold, there was a unit called Uqiya. And the Uqiya was um, made up of 42 mithqals. And an an in certain Arab-speaking areas, an uqiya had its own definition. But it appears from the research I did that an uqiya is equivalent to 200 grams of gold. So Abu Sufyan, according to Al-Hakam ibn Utayba, spent 40 times 200 grams of gold in those times to finance the battle of Uhud. Of course, 
course, this information, uh, you, uh, a person right now would probably begin to ask himself, well, why, did, why am I not uh, plugged into this information? The reason you and I are not plugged into this information is because it was deliberately omitted from the public mind when the governance of Muslims went awry, beginning with Muawiyah. Another well-known scholar, his name is Qatada. I'm sure any of you who've done a little reading in the books of Hadith and history are familiar with Qatada. Qatada said this ayah that we are speaking about was revealed pointing to Abi Sufyan. Another scholar, Alim, a Suddi, said, as Fima can al Mushrikun, women whom Abu Sufyan, Yesta Jirun al Rijal, Yukatiluna Muhammadan Bihin. This ayah was revealed as Abu Sufyan was contracting Mushriks, Mushrik men, to fight against Muhammad. Alayhi salatu was salam. Now this, I think at this point, knowing this much, we should begin to realize that those first generation scholars were aware of the meanings of these ayat. But why didn't the meanings of these ayat, the explanation of the revelation of these ayat, why didn't it endure in the public Muslim mind? So that if I were to express the same thing today to you and to others, you'd say, oh, I knew that. You're not telling me anything new. But the fact of the matter is, uh, at least I'm quite confident to the majority of those who are listening and understanding what's being said, this is new to them. Really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, as the Umawi dynasty was uh, establishing itself by the use of brunt force, there were civil wars here involved. And the deep state at that time uh, the genesis of it began during the reign of the third Khalifa Uthman, radiyallahu an. I It's not my um, habit to follow the names of the pers personalities around the Prophet with the honorifics of alayhi salam or radiyallahu an. But in this particular instance, the reason I said Uthman radiallahu an is because some people confuse Uthman with the relatives that were manipulating the position of Uthman as Khalifa to sink in their anchors of power to take over after Uthman. So I, I don't want there to be a misunderstanding that someone wants to equate Muawiyah with Umar ibn al-Khattab or even Muawiyah with Uthman, even though Muawiyah and Uthman were relatives belonging to the same clan. But one of them, Muawiyah, was a power monger. Uthman was an elderly person who was trying to do his best in circumstances that were uh, hijacked 
by his relatives. That's why Imam Ali, and this is a yardstick in these events, Imam Ali sent his sons to defend Uthman when Uthman was under siege by the uh, people who came from distances to object to the injustices that were being officialized by those who were appointed officially by Uthman, but in reality by Muawiyah and his inner circle. Uh, so no one that I know of can and have the information to include Abba Sufyan among the Muhajireen and Ansar. And with all the attempts, even Ibn Taymiyyah, who is a reference for those who are Umawi drunk, even Ibn Taymiyyah would concede that Abu Sufyan doesn't belong to the Muhajireen and Ansar. He's a latecomer, a Johnny come lately, who expressed publicly his Islam when he was militarily defeated. Even at Tabi'in, the generation that came after the first generation of the Prophet, even they were aware of the fact that Abu Sufyan is not from among al-Muhajireen nor from among al-Ansar. So who is he? He's among al-Tulaqa. He is a taliq. He is one who was amnestied by the Prophet from his 20-year career of warfare against the Prophet and against the message of Allah. Another scholar, his name is Mujahid, and those who are familiar with the books of Hadith and history are familiar with the name Mujahid. He said this ayah in Surah Al-Anfal was revealed to disclose what Abu Sufyan was doing, i.e. financing the Kafirin's war against the Mu'mineen and Muslimin. Ibn Abbas, you want more than Ibn Abbas in which he is defined by one of the statements of the Prophet as being Habr, Havihi al-Ummah, the pontiff, so to speak, if we wanted to borrow one of their words from the English language, of the Ummah of Islam, of Iman. He also said that this ayah refers to Abu Sufyan as being the financier of the wars against the Prophet and the combat committed Muslims with the Prophet. Another one is Az-Zuhri. You've heard that name, I think. Another one is Muhammad ibn Yahya ibn Habban and Asim ibn Umar ibn Qatada. And Al Hasin ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Amr ibn Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. All of these are saying this ayah that we are speaking about in the Quran is exposing the role that Abu Sufyan played in financing the wars against Allah's Prophet. Another one, Ata ibn Dinar. He said, Nazalat fi Abi Sufyan ibn Harb. This ayah. 
came down in Revelation to point to Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. So now if we if we had counted all of these, we'd find out 14 Islamic scholars in their own right who say this ayah is an ayah that informs us about the anti-Islamic financial involvement of Abu Sufyan. Saeed ibn Jubair, Abdul Rahman ibn Abzal Khazai, he is the wali of Umar over El over Mecca. Qatada, and Qatada is considered to be uh, pro Umawi, but even though he is pro Umawi. Not a hardcore one, but anyways, he said this ayah was revealed concerning Abu Sufyan. Mujahid, the well-known Mufassir, a Sudi, who's, you know, you will find in the books of Hadith. Al-Hakam ibn Utayba, and you'll find his... Uh, Involvement in the narration of hadiths in the six sihah of the books of hadith. As Zuhri, who, who was considered first and foremost the number one scholar of the people of Asham and Al Hijaz, meaning the Arabian Peninsula and the Levant. And obviously, above all, was Ibn Abbas. So that's one ayah that tells us who Abu Sufyan was. We will go on to other ayat, inshallah, so that no one comes and says, oh, you look, you know, he's speaking against Muawiyah and he's speaking against Bani Umayyah because he's relying on some books and these books. Are, no, no, let's go back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Let's understand these ayat properly. And may Allah increase our knowledge and multiply our hasanat. And a Jumu'ah Mubarakah to everyone who is tuned in. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.